Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Johnson and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator here at Greensboro College. It's February 14th, 2022. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And I'm here today with GC alum Donald Watkins, class of 2010, to discuss his acting career and his recent film, Emergency, as well as his experiences at Greensboro College. So how are you doing today, Donald? Did you have a good weekend? I did, I did. It was quiet. Uh, which is nice. It, it doesn't always happen that way. Um, and it was warmer than it has been. I was like, please don't let it snow. Please don't <laughs> let it be 20 degrees. <laughs> so yeah, it was nice. I was able to get out and do a little, do a little something. Oh, that's awesome. So a little bit about Donald's background. He is a native of Greensboro, having graduated from both Southeast Guilford High and Greensboro College, where he had earned a BC in theater with a concentration in acting. He then went on to earn his master's at Louisiana State University. His first film role was in Pitch Perfect, and he has appeared in television shows like the remakes of Roots and MacGyver, Preacher and the Underground Railroad, as well as in films like 22 Jump Street, Get On Up, First Man, and most recently, Emergency. So about like your latest film, Emergency, can you talk about the process of how you joined the cast and how you landed that opportunity? Oh man, this is, yeah, definitely. Um, emergency is very personal to me. Um, well, one, it was the first audition I had of that year. Uh, so it was last spring. See, you know what, since pandemic, I'm like, wait, what was two <laughs> years ago? What was a year ago? Um, I think it was 2021, absolutely, yeah, 2021. Mm -hmm. And it was my first audition of the year. and it was so funny because I read the script. And I'm like, man, this dude is really, really cool. Um, but not cool in the sense of like, oh, he's a cool guy. It's just like yeah. character building and things like that. Um, it was something I really wanted to undertake, but I, the script kind of made it seem like he was like smaller than I. And Zoom doesn't do me justice. I'm not like a small person. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, oh no, I, was, I just didn't think that they were gonna pick me. Um, so I kind of put it off in the back of my mind and we have some other things working. And then those things kept getting picked off. And mm -hmm. I was like, boy, but I really want emergency. I really want emergency. And uh, yeah, stars just sort of aligned for it to happen. And then it, you know, I got the call and I danced around and I had Alexa play music. And it was, yeah, it was, it was perfect. And it turned out to be the best experience that I've had cinematically. And it's gonna be hard to top. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. And congratulations on landing that role. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. So like now that the movie's over, like how do you react when Emergency is getting like noteworthy praise and won a screenwriting award at, at the Sundance Film Festival, which is one of the biggest film festivals in the industry. And you played such a prominent role in the movie as like one of the main leads. So how does it feel to get like that, that reaction to the film? Man, it, it feels nice because you never know you never know how people are going to react. You know, we, you put your art out there and once you put it out there, it's not yours anymore. It's yeah. whoever consumes it and how they consume it, when they consume it, which parts they want to take. I look at art like a buffet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I want more of these. I want more. Uh, I don't really like that that much, but you can't say, oh no, you need more of this. Um, so whatever they take from it, that's what they take. Uh, and we thought we had something very special and we kept saying it as we were filming. So I'm one of those people where I admittedly read almost everything that comes out. Yeah. Uh, and they always say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Don't worry about criticism. And I'm, all, I'm always looking. I'm like, okay, who's, what did they say? What did, who didn't like it? Who liked it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just that person. So reading it and then you start seeing the Rotten Tomatoes and we were like, oh man, we're still in the 90s. Oh, we're in the 90s. <laughs> Oh, you know, they like us, they really like us. Um, so it just, it felt really nice uh, to know that um, at some point we affected someone's life in a positive way. And that's all you do it for. If you can affect one person in a positive way, then you did your job. Um, and the film hasn't even come out, you know, widespread yet. And it's already getting what it's getting. So yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice ride. I've never <laughs> been in this situation before. I've always kind of been supporting to other people's uh, development and, you know, rooting them on. So it's nice to be the one front and center. It's also nice to not have that expectation on my head. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it was more carried by RJ and Sabrina and maybe Sebastian Madison. Uh, so then I come in and people are like, whoa, who is Donald Elise Watkins? Where did this come from? <laughs> 
I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I, I did that. So, but it's exciting. It's, I'm, I'm ready to see where it goes. And I'm, I'm excited to see how people that I know react to it. Um, I actually snuck into uh, a theater <laughs> <laughs> during Sunday. So I, I went um, to the Aperture uh, Cinema in Winston because mm -hmm. uh, Sundance, they were doing like these satellite screenings. Yeah. And they picked, I think, seven cities and Winston-Salem just happened to be wow. one of them. I was like, oh, whoa, I'm, I gotta go. There's no way I'm not going to, but I didn't tell them I was coming and I just kind of sat in and like that first laugh is the, it's like a, an eternity I'm just waiting. And it didn't take long, but it felt like it took 20 minutes, probably took like 30 seconds. And then once you hear that, you're just like, okay, yeah. All right, this <laughs> okay. And going through that journey with an audience was, yeah, it was unbelievable. I know like at the start of this interview, like I had listed some of like the film credits that you were in both on television and on like the big screen. And you had just kind of mentioned before, like how like it was very helpful to have like your colleagues and like that cast like help support you. And I know right. in the credits I had listed, like you were, you mostly were like in kind of supporting roles, but in this one, in emergency, you're like in one of the lead roles. Can you talk, to, talk about that? I guess the acting process of like transitioning from like more support to like one of the major pieces oh, of the man. film. They always say that there's no small parts. There's only small actors, right? Yeah. Um, and it's it's very true. But I think if you get into this, you want to have that that prominent role at some point. Um, I I know that I want to I want to look back on my career and say, hey, I really enjoyed this process. Hey, I really enjoyed this story. Um, I love that people love this thing about it and feel like I was able to really affect that story and affect that, that change. So it's a long process, man. It is, it's tough. And some, some people, it happens like right off the bat. Yeah. And I think that optimism coming, especially coming out of Greensboro college, because at the time <laughs> we worked so hard and I, I still think that they do um, I just haven't been around to like see it and put my hands on it, but I know because I know that staff and I know those kids and I know that they work their butts off. Um, so I remember when I was there, like we worked so many hours and I remember every, like everybody's like going to clubs and having all this fun. And I'm like, where are you going? Like, I'm going to rehearsal. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? So like, yeah, I'm going to rehearsal. What time you get out? I probably get out at nine, but then I got another rehearsal. And then I have like another little student rehearsal that I got to do my homework and then eat something and then do it all over again. So having that work ethic sort of instilled into me, um, it, it gets you ready for what you're going to experience in life. Like it's not, it'd be, it would have been nice if it would have just happened like that for me. But I look back on things and I feel like, yeah, I see why there was a lot of growth and mature, like maturing that I needed to do as a man in yeah. order to sustain the success that I ultimately want to sustain throughout my, you know, entire career, because it's not a, you know, it's not a sprint. <laughs> it's a marathon. I want to be doing this until I don't want to do it anymore. So, yeah. And I don't see myself not wanting to do it. So, so, so going back to like the film, um, mm -hmm. like given the racial history of this country, especially like the past few years with like Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, oh. Ahmaud Arbery and many others when they were really like in ordinary circumstances when they were killed and that question is kind of like the premise of emergency can you describe like being a part of like the broader conversation about that and like our society with this film yeah definitely um one complete respect to you know all of them and their families uh, I think that's something and it was all happening around the same time you know and as a, I mean, at the, at the beginning and the end of the day, I, mm -hmm. I wake up a black man, I go to bed a black man. I've been black for 33 years. You know, I will continue to be until I'm gone. Um, so I felt a sense of responsibility that I had not only to myself, but to anyone that looks like me. And it's something that we talked about. Um, we didn't take it lightly. Uh, I know we spoke about it, Carrie, myself and RJ before, we even cast other people if we sat down and we had these conversations um and then you get the the shooting schedule and you know okay there's a couple of days where i need to kind of be in my own space i need to be in my own zone without giving anything away yeah um yeah. but uh yeah it's 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 unfortunate because you have to give you have to go there there's no playing at a certain thing 
uh, sometimes those emotions are absolutely needed because there have been people in this situation that didn't make it out of the situation. And that's real life. And unfortunately, there will be people in this situation that will not make it out of this situation, you know, even after this film. Um, yeah. For the, the, you know, for the only thing of, hey, you look the way that you look. Um, and I have a son and it's that all, that's always like really personal to me because trying to explain, I think, especially when it comes to racism, like you're trying to explain it to children and they just don't get it because it doesn't make sense to them because it doesn't make sense in society, you know? Exactly. It's, it's like, you try to run about a kid, like, okay, but why? Like I didn't do anything to anybody. Why are they gonna feel that way towards me? It's like, they're just because they are, because of the experience that either they had or a bias or just, just anything, it, just the way that they were taught. Yeah. Um, and you could not make it home. And that's just something that, yeah, it, it, it weighs heavy on me. And I know I never want to have to go through that personally. It's a big fear of mine. I never want my child to have to go through it, his children, anyone to have to go through that. Um, so yeah, I definitely felt a, a huge sense of responsibility with this and to do it right and to do it justice and um, to still, you know, give as much respect uh, to these characters that I could. and. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it felt, it felt good. I felt good with it. I couldn't articulate it any better. I, I have that fear about myself, about like my family members, about my friends. So I think you guys all did a great job of like getting that message out with this film. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, now that like, this one's like finished, are you like taking a break right now or do you have any ah. upcoming projects coming up? Man, no breaks, no breaks. No, breaks. <laughs> um, <laughs> no not. Not any that I, I want to. Uh, I guess I'm in sort of a little thing. Uh, we, we got accepted to South by Southwest. So we're doing that in March. And then the film comes out in May. We get a limited theatrical release and then it hits Amazon Prime on May the 27th. So okay. there's a lot of press that I have to do in between, but we're working on uh, working on securing this other thing right now that I cannot talk about, but it's, okay. it's really exciting for me to undertake that. And I always want to, like play different characters. It's really just about the character for me and um, like going on these journeys. Uh, I never wanna do something just, just for the sake of doing it or somebody who's just sort of surface and just sort of there. Mm -hmm. um, so this next thing will be, you know, hopefully more magic. Uh, but yeah, it's something that I'm really excited about, really passionate about. So I look forward to being able to talk about that soon. Um, but yeah, I want this to be the busiest year that I've ever had and then just keep building on that. So yeah, like I said, fingers crossed. <laughs> well, good luck. And I mean, if, I mean, definitely let us know about any, any news you have. Oh, definitely, definitely. You see, I had to come through with my little Greensboro College shirt. It only felt fitting. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Oh yeah. <laughs> moving away from like, I guess like your, your career now, your professional career, going back to Greensboro. Um, I saw that you like, when you were younger in the city, you were very active. You had played sports at South Guilford High, but then mm -hmm. you went into drama at Southeast Guilford. I mean, where you won like best actor at the theater conference for the state. Can you talk about that transition of changing schools? I think I saw that like, it was because your family moved and also just yeah. the transition from like sports to drama. Uh, yeah, um, I always felt like I was a little dramatic. I think my mom likes telling that story a lot. Um, she knew it before I knew it. Um, that was always sort of the first love since I was nine. And I, I, I think when you're that young, you don't understand what this is. This is like a viable career. You just know that you like doing it. Um, we auditioned for this, uh, we were doing like this, uh, this chorus concert and we had these mini commercials in, in between where we would just come up and do a little skit. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were auditions for that skit there was this thing called Mud Mouth Be Gone. I still remember the lines. It's so wild. <laughs> but uh, I can't remember like my friend's birthdays, but I can easily recite all of my lines from fourth grade with Mud Mouth Be Gone and how it cleans and freshens your whole mouth. Anyways, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was, you know, I remember like really working on that all night and I, mm -hmm. got, I got into it and I, I learned all my lines and I was off book and I, I went in there and other people were just kind of like reading off the page and they had us all like auditioning <laughs> together and I'm just watching them like, nah, I got this. 
this. I got this. <laughs> and I went last and they laughed. I'm like, oh man, that felt good. That was nice. What was that? And I feel like that right there, like that was like the spark. Um, and then you put it away, you, you know, get too cool and all. Everybody else is doing sports. So you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this too. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was never, I don't know. I was never committed like that uh, when it came to basketball or football or I was supposed to run track once we moved and go in the Southeast. And uh, yeah, I, I had drama on my schedule, got into that class and ended up loving it. So I just stayed and, you know, Tara Chapel at the time, uh, her name's Tara Chapel at the time, she's married now. Um, mm -hmm. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And she was the one who got me to where I was and like, hey, you really have something here. You should, you should try it. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, I'll try it. And then we, you know, go to NCTC and yeah, yeah, huh. I owe a lot to to NCTC. So it was it wasn't as tough as as you think. Um, yeah, I know some people were like, no, but you were. If I was going pro, then maybe. But I wasn't. I wasn't going professional. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a lot easier because I I felt like I I cared more about this thing, and it wasn't you know, a huge debate. Yeah, um, I think my mom was like, okay, how are you going to be able to? You know, what's once you start really leaning into that, okay, how do you make a future out of this? And uh yeah, I think I've been doing all right so far. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> so like when you were like at Greensboro College, like what do you remember about like being on campus and being at the school? Like, and do you have like say like a favorite performance that you remember? Ooh. Oh man. Um I have to come with the hard hitting questions. Uh <laughs> yeah, I Honestly, I was, I just remember like my, like my tribe, like the theater department, um, we were yeah. super close. And I feel like that's forced in a way because you have classes with these people. Um, you have the same schedule as them mainly. So like, those are the people that you're around and I'm a big creature of my environment. But it's, uh, once I went over to grad to LSU, I realized yeah. that like, not everyone has that. Even when I was at GC, I realized that like not everybody has like 60 built-in friends, <laughs> you know, at, at any point in time. So I just remember like long hours and a lot of laughs and a lot of rehearsals and really hard. It was really, really tough. I don't think we can like overstate that. It was really hard, but we, we wanted it that way. Yeah. Um, once I left GC and I got to grad school, I was like, man, I have so much free time. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? It's not supposed to be like this. Like, I have so much time to, to do things. It's like Greensboro was harder than, you know, than this was. Um, but it was just a lot of love, man. Um, a lot of growth uh, because you enter in, you're 18 years old. Yeah. And you grow from, for me, it was 18 to 21. And it's like, man yeah looking back on my freshman year and then you just like see yourself transitioning and all these other people transitioning with you um and I keep in contact with a good amount of those guys and yeah we just kind of look back on it and laugh and it's like holy smokes do you remember this do you remember this I think probably the most impactful though my my favorite show was this show that we did called Fat Pig mm -hmm. um and I got a chance to play this guy named Carter and he is nothing like me, like yeah. at all. I mean, he's really abrasive and just kind of obnoxious and um, really self-centered and egotistical. And I was like, man, this like, just kind of like diving into that. But also the year prior, I didn't get, <laughs> I when I first got there, I thought I was the man. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I yeah. thought I was the man. I was like, man, David, had me in his office for all this time. This is going to be great. I'm going to come in. I'm going to run all this because I did all this at Southeast. And you get humbled so quickly. And I, uh, at that time, we uh, auditioned for all of the shows. You did it at the beginning. And then for second semester, you auditioned for those shows in December before you left on break. So I remember being home and I had this slow dial up. We didn't have Broadway. We only had dial up. And I'm just sitting there waiting. I'm just <laughs> watching the list come up. I'm like, okay, now I'm not on this. Okay, I'm not in this one. And check it. Okay, I'm not in that show either. And I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm like, I'm not in any of these shows. Mm -hmm. And I have to go back to the school. I'm like, do they not know who I am? Do they not, you know, as a, <laughs> just a young kid, just thinking that you're like God's gift to this thing. I'm yeah. like, hey, take a step back, do the work, 
and figure this thing out. And I did, and like you completely take that, you know, that I guess whatever that ego is and say, hey, how can you be in service to these characters? There's something that's, that's missing here. Um, and I went to Bar Theater that summer, that freshman summer, and I came back and everything just kind of opened up and it changed. Um, I think we did Blood Wedding and Fat Pig in the same year. Um, and that was the first first two shows that I was able, like able to be a part of where I was like a prominent character. I yeah. was like, okay, yeah, this is great. So those are always kind of hold, you know, special little, like, yeah, little special places with me, man. Yeah, definitely. Like, so my last question is, and I'm sure you probably ask, you ask this a lot as someone who's like really made it, but like young, <laughs> but like for like young actors or like theater students, like wanting to break into the industry, like what would be some advice you would give to them? Oh man, uh, a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, one, that film is very different from theater. I mean, acting is acting, but it's still like if you think of it like a muscle, right? It's like chest day and leg day. I guess it's like a yeah. different thing. Um, in theater, we're taught to be really broad because you got to play to the back of the audience. Um, but for film, you don't have to do all of that. Um, still keep that same inner life and keep it very much um, full, but you really have to scope it um, because the camera's gonna pick up on every little thing that you do. I'm still learning that myself. I, I catch myself and you go back and watch things and I'm like, oh man. Just like less is more, D, less is more. Like you don't have to do that much. Just trust it and trust that it's there. Um, and also that it's gonna be really difficult. Um, and hopefully it's not, you know, hopefully it's yeah. not. Hopefully you get your first audition, you get a series regular and you're paid so much money and people love you and you get awards and you just go from there and you live it up. But unfortunately that's not gonna be the case for everybody. So there's gonna be a lot of no's. Um, but if this is what you really, really want to do, then it's almost like my buddy Anthony McMurray always talked about like uh you remember like those those cars in the mall and like, oh the ones that would be just yeah. sitting there yeah yeah you sit there and you put your hand on the car and they're like all right whoever you know has their hand on the car they're not gonna <laughs> oh win yeah this car. like that's how it is it really is how it is you have to outlast people almost because at some point, you know, I guess sticking with the metaphor, people are going to get hungry and leave, or they're going to get tired, or they're going to have to, there's going to be, sick. and then next thing you know, it's like five of you, and people are like, well, you know what, we got extra cards back here, here, you all get a card, like, what, what, and like, yeah, and now you continuously keep getting cards, they're like, oh, shoot, and the cards are the rolls, and yeah, I think it's one of those things where you just have to trust that you are in it for the long haul, believe in yourself, really do the work, um and continuously like just not quitting yeah you know you have to look at a dream that only that you like this dream that only you can see and say that you know i'm not gonna give up and just keep going um i don't think that i'm particularly better than anybody i think that i refuse to kind of be outworked and i said that i'm not gonna quit and there have been many times where i probably could have um and I just did it. And the universe kind of opens up and gives you what you want after a while. So I just was really fortunate to kind of wade through that. So yeah, really blessed with that one. Okay. Well, well, well thank you for thank you for taking the time again, like to meet with us. Meet Absolutely. You know, no, um, so, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> we love you too. So oh, thanks. <laughs> So thank you everyone for listening or watching another episode of This Side of the Pride. Uh, we especially hope you enjoyed our conversation with Donald Watkins, who we really appreciate taking the time out of his schedule to meet. If you're interested in following Donald on social media, you can find him on Instagram at CallMeDonald. So that's all for this episode. Thank you, Donald, again, and we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, man.